Hey there, everyone. My name is Frank Klesitz with Viral Marketing, the CEO of Viral Marketing. And welcome to an agent interview with Joe up in the Bay Area in San Francisco, where his uh, average or average home selling price is $1.24 million. I think that's uh, below the average out there, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah. The median is probably in the county is like 1.6. Yep. So I think probably the whole idea here today is that uh, he's doing the viral marketing plan with videos from a webcam, which the, the limiting belief I hear all the time in luxury markets is, oh, I have to go spend a fortune on production. And uh, that's not the case. You know, maybe it has to be looked a little, a little more design, paid attention to for like more of a fashion feel. But um, the whole viral plan works just fine in a luxury market, quote unquote. All right. So um, today what we're going to do is we're going to dive deep and we're going to find out how Joe uh, is using the viral marketing plan of, you know, reconnecting with his, his existing list, growing his list. You know, what is he doing to build his database? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What does that mean? What is, what is a database? Uh, we'll talk about some of the topics that Joe sends out. Like what are the video topics that work? Or how does he come up with his topics? How does he shoot his videos? How much time does it take? So you can maybe model that for yourself. And then we'll talk about prioritizing follow-up. We have Joe a report of everyone who watches the videos. Uh, a couple of days after an email goes out, there's a report of everyone who clicks the links. And those are some nice names to know if you want to prioritize follow-up. And if you want to get a copy of the entire plan that we execute for you here at Viral Marketing and the plan that Joe's following that me he liked, is you go to the homepage of our website. It's getviral.com, G-E-T-V-Y, R-A-L, Viral Marketing. And uh, download the official video marketing plan. It's right there on the homepage for you to check out. And if you are interested in working with us in any way, you know you can request a free strategy call. Um, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee to test the waters to see if you know you like being on video and if there's any business in your database with that first reconnect message. But um, that's pretty much the the call to action for the webinar today. Everything else is going to be totally educational to dive deep to give you some pointers to make some money and to sell some homes if you're in real estate, uh, especially if you're in a, if you're ever selling prices, 1.24 million, right? So Joe, thanks for doing this, man, and sharing all this. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, man. Well, let me give everyone a little background. So you've been selling real estate for four years in the San Francisco Bay and San Jose County area. San Mateo uh, County. Uh, what? San Mateo County. Oh, San Mateo County, correct. Yeah. But, yeah, between San Francisco and San Jose. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So before we uh, before selling real estate, you managed a store in your family's business, but you got into you got your real estate license when you were license when you were twenty. Yes. Uh, just started doing it. You're now with uh, KW. In your total career, you sold about forty six homes. In the last twelve months, you sold twenty homes. But everyone, listen up. At an average price point of one point two four million, what are uh, I know there's I know there's no standard commission rate, but what are the what, what what's the commission rate up there in homes? Well, just standard between, yeah, standard between five and six. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still the same commission that of any other market, yes. right? There's but all um, discount brokers just like anywhere else. But um, for the most part, uh, buyers agents always get two and a half plus. Um, and yeah, uh, I charge five percent minimum on every yeah. listing. Yep. So I guess my question is: is you know you really want to grow, man? You want to be the number one guy in the san francisco bay area and yeah. do i read do i read number one in the world joe yes yes all right well you can do that Why? it's going to require a lot of leverage a lot of marketing leverage a lot of people leverage right yes, yes definitely so um let me ask you my first question so for an omaha nebraska guy like me where i was born and raised in omaha nebraska and i since moved to san diego uh tell me what's different in this i want you to talk to everyone else in the country so kind of get out of the the San Francisco bubble. What's different or is there anything different working in a luxury market or a high end market, a million dollar plus market than let's say working in the Midwest with, you know, let's say like an affluent educated clientele, let's say. Right. So is there a difference? Um, yes and no. Um, a lot of the sellers and a lot of listings um, are essentially, you know, it used to be affordable here, <laughs> believe it or not, a while ago. Um, and a lot of people who've owned homes here for 20, 30, 40 years or regular blue collar, you know, police officers, nurses, teachers, um, just regular folks, not super sophisticated programmers, engineers, and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, 
And so a lot of sellers are, yeah, just, I, I don't see any difference between them and probably somebody in Omaha or San Diego or anywhere. Um, but the, the, the commission rates and the way the business works, there's any, any difference there? Um, I believe because we have lower inventory, we have a low level of inventory compared to other places. Um, and a lot more competition because commission rates are much higher. So everybody wants to be a, I mean, a commission, mm -hmm. total commission is yeah, higher. The total, the total commission you got on the sale. Yeah. It's a lot more wise. 25 to $50,000 per home. You know, everybody wants to be a realtor. They feel like that's a lot of money. So um, I think it's a, I don't know other markets necessarily very intimately, but I would imagine that we're pretty competitive over here because of that dynamic. Now I heard about, maybe a little under a year ago that there were only like 400 homes for sale in the entire county. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, something like that. I, yeah. I put all the stats and something I was just looking at last night. I can tell you right now, September, 2018, um, new homes that came on the market, 591 and in inventory, 678. Now that's actually pretty high. The year yeah, before that's a little higher, but 670 uh, homes for how many millions of people? Yeah. In the county. Yeah. I mean, there's millions up there that at least want to probably own, but there's only 600 some homes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's probably at least a population of about a million in the County. That's incredible. All right, man. So why don't you walk me through, you needed, you wanted to grow your business and you needed a way to get listings in that market. Yes. As of now, very sophisticated market. I do know it's, uh, personally, it's difficult to get phone numbers up there. And I also know it's very difficult to get someone to like opt in with their phone number online. Cause these are, these are internet marketing people. They know what happens when you put your phone number into safe searches. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, also it's interesting. Um, in some of the marketing material that I get, uh, they, they actually took the country by which areas of the country had the highest click through rates on banner ads. Like, you know, banner ads, yeah, Silicon yeah. Valley has the lowest click through rate on banner ads of yeah. any part of the country. You know, we create it. We create all of them. Here. Yeah. So a lot of some of the, maybe the traditional um, internet marketing stuff that is used throughout the rest of the country has, a, there's, there's wins against you up in that market. So why don't you step back to when you maybe realize you needed to do something to communicate with your database and you were researching what to use. I want to hear your decision process of all the options out there, why you may chose the viral plan. So take me back to that point of your career, which wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Um, I think, well, I knew about viral for like a few years and I started about a year ago. Right. Um, but I knew about it for a few years, but you know, it's all about like lead with revenue. You can put your money in a lot of places. Um, and I overanalyze everything. I'm, uh, analysis paralysis on everything, unfortunately. Um, but, I, um, when I was at that point, I was thinking, um, I need to stay in front of my database. I didn't do a good job. I wasn't consistent enough. I didn't have an assistant at the time. Um, I actually had just let go of one. Um, so I wasn't consistently marketing to them. And so I had to choose something. And, you know, after just comparing a lot of different programs and a lot of things, I realized that, um, viral is pretty much the best value, um, because it, you guys post to Facebook, you guys send out emails, um, you, you just kind of make it, you post to the blog, you, um, you make it pretty turnkey for me. And also it's pretty compelling to have the video and the face and me being able to explain things um, and a lot of the topics that I explain. So it was kind of during the decision-making process of what to choose, where I'm competing against mostly email marketing automation software that's fairly you know, boilerplate or just kind of, you know, like, yeah, it's more canned, more canned, just kind of basic. Um, this allowed me to make videos and uh, be, you know, very, be not the opposite of that um, and be consistent and, and have a turnkey and I just pay a monthly fee and not have to um, do everything myself. Cool. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, let's talk about, um, well, let me ask you this question. Do you have any stories of maybe how you know this is working well? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I know you're a uh, student of Dan Kennedy and direct response marketing. And all that. You know what? It's funny you say that. I have his newsletter right here. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, I would imagine. Of course I do, right? So I just, yeah, I just uh, uh, read like three in a row uh, Dan Kennedy books, twice each. 
They're good, aren't they? So, yeah, by the it, way, if anyone wants a really good book, sorry, we're browing out over Dan. Uh, go check out um, uh, the Ultimate Marketing Plan, No BS Wealth Attraction, any of the No BS book series. Um, those are pure gold. Oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, you know what? When we start people at Viral, just so you know, we have our new hires at Viral Marketing that, <laughs> yeah, our new hires at Viral Marketing that don't know anything about marketing that we have to train up from scratch. Of all of the marketing books that, that I give them, all the ones that I've chosen to teach them like the absolute fundamentals of like kind of direct response, small business marketing, not like the big branding stuff that we learn in college, like Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. I give them the ultimate marketing plan book. So anyways, yeah, but go on. So big student, Dan Kennedy. That's a good book. So yeah, so um, there is, obviously there's a, a major component in viral with direct response that you that you kind of um, integrate in the plan, right? So with the uh, click here for your home valuation, click here for this. So there's a, there's a lot of that. Um, and so what Dan says a lot is that any branding that you do must be free uh, or must be just part of whatever. Whatever brand building occurs will be a happy byproduct, not bought. That's, I have the 10 rules for no, yes. no BS rules. Um, so, uh, the thing is, is that a lot of the value that I get from it is actually that brand building that's a direct byproduct. And so any, so the main value that I get is because these videos go out via email on my LinkedIn, on Facebook, and that's pretty much everybody that I know, including, I'm, you know, I'm a younger guy, I'm 29. So I got my license when I was 20, but I started when I was 25. So just to clarify, if somebody's like, wait, I don't get those numbers. Um, but um, I'm a younger guy. So everybody in my age group and in my generation is on Facebook, on social media, and their parents are as well. Everybody that I meet or see or talk to anywhere, like 95% say, hey, I've been seeing your videos. Like anywhere, in any setting, anywhere. And including because I do the ads of on my Facebook business page and market to people who like your page and their friends for like 50 bucks every yep. video almost or every other video because I don't want to get, you know, blast them too much maybe, whatever. But um, it's people who I don't know who are like, oh, you're Joe Poliak. Yeah, yeah, hi. Like, Isn't that cool? And it's like, and somebody who's like my friend's cousin, you know, who like owns two properties or whatever. And I, I, you know, I've gotten, Hey, you don't know me. I'm this person's cousin. We have a lot of mutual friends on Facebook. I see your videos all the time. I'm thinking about selling my house. Can you come over? So I've gotten those calls too. Great. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so what we do with Joe uh, or with you as a client is we interview you on a webcam like this and we kind of coach you through uh, creating a couple of helpful Q and a videos every month that you can um, share some expertise and we guide you to that. And then we edit them, we put them on the blog, we put, send them out to your database. There's, it's all up on the website. But what Joe alluded to was we upload it to your Facebook business page. And if you just post on your business page, Facebook doesn't give you very much reach on it without having to pay them money. So it's actually very simple. There's this big giant boost button on the, they make it really easy. It's a big button says give, me, give Facebook money. Uh, you click the boost button and it says maybe who would you like to put a little money into showing this on the newsfeed to people. And uh, one of the, one of the audiences that we recommend is actually your entire email list. So we take your entire email database, upload it to Facebook and Facebook matches those emails with user accounts, which is pretty sweet. I don't know if you knew that Joe, but we can boost I, it. I actually and, didn't know that part. Let's uh, let's yeah. So talk to your person and um, we'll take all the emails. And, and here's what's cool. They don't have to be permission-based. So you, if you have like a country club membership, if you have a, a corporate roster, if you have an HOA list, if you have any of those emails, um, from what I understand, I know Facebook keeps changing their terms of service, but you can upload those, okay? And boost your videos, not only out to your database, but really any email list. And we just kind of throw them all in there and we'll see them if that email matches up to what someone uses their email on their Facebook account. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So um, we could boost it to that, but uh, what Joe does is he boosts it to his fans, all the people who likes his page, and any friends of those people. But it's just a little extra thing you do to put a little more money into your videos so more people see it. So that's all. Yeah. Great. Cool, man. All right. So let's dive into like how this is like, you're actually getting this to work. So let's talk about why this is working. So when you first signed up, 
we wanted to reconnect with your existing list. Now, were you doing anything to stay in touch with your past clients, centers of influence, leads, contacts, up until the point? Radically. Of yeah, like sending, you know, send postcards. Um, but it's like, it was just inconsistent, sporadically. Um, you know, Facebook, some emails, I would try this service, I would try that. And it was just inconsistent and sporadic. That's the okay. issue. So we had to basically export those contacts from all your various systems, clean those up, figure out who we can email and who we can't, and send out a reconnect message. Do you remember anything from that? Be honest. Yeah. You remember that process? Yeah. We, we, yeah. we just downloaded everybody, got everybody, and then it was just an email that says, like, hey, sorry if, you know, I haven't been in touch, and now I'm going to start sending you videos, you know, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Yep. So that's the first thing that goes out. So we reconnect with your existing list. And then did you start doing the webcam interviews with us? Were we interviewed you on the webcam? Um, yes, I did a couple of those, but then I flew out to Omaha and I, I shot, shot videos in Omaha. All right. Yeah, I shot, I flew out to Omaha and I shot 16 videos there. Um, and I've done supplemental in between. Those are the evergreen videos that I shot. Mm -hmm. Supplemental in between uh, would be market updates, stats, um, event invites, things like that. Cool. So one of the things that we do for our clients is you could totally record your videos with us twice a month over a webcam. You could certainly go out and, uh, you know, shoot it on like your phone if you want to, but sometimes just cause of human behavior and just getting it done and right, Joe, um, at no extra charge, it was free. I think we just maybe charged the cost of renting the Regis room for a hundred bucks. Yes. It looks yeah. a lot nicer than our kind of our crummy office we have in Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the best. Um, we keep, we keep it, uh, we keep costs low here to pass the savings on to our customers, Joe. So don't shoot in our office. Uh, I think about a hundred bucks to rent space at a real nice office building. And, uh, we just spend maybe a half day or a day just uh, shooting some videos with you. Yeah. Right. Good. Exactly. Yeah. What are, uh, what are some of the topics that you find work well after sending out your stuff? Um, what do you mean? What, which topics do you find get the most engagement? Which topics do you find are the most relevant to your audience? Like if you had a, if you had to, you know, double down on some of the questions you answer or some of the topics or what you send out in your content, what would you recommend to the audience they start with to get the best results? So, um, I'm glad you bring that up actually. So generally, like as things are going out, um, I get fairly, uh, similar responses for, like everything it's fairly consistent you know but where i find a lot of value in the videos actually is in my follow-up emails um so i still do a lot of cold calling um i haven't been door knocking as much as i should but i do a lot of cold calling and like follow up with hot leads and things like that and people call me and i do a lot of i send out my videos so everything related to buyers like in my follow-up email i'm like hey this and this here's what we talked about Here's the so next you're, you're linking to these videos in your one-to-one -one follow up. You're driving them back to your. Mind. Yes. Yeah. All the time. And everything that's relevant because I all I did in those that. videos is answer questions yes. um, that people want to know the process of how do you get your offer accepted in multiple offer situation? Well, do I have to repeat that 72 times or can I just send you a video and then like watch this video and then call me and I'll just supplement what the video says leverage. It also positions you because I'm assuming these are just phone calls you're having with somebody and you're just some other guy on the phone. Yeah, right. Exactly. And then it you it differentiates email, and they click a link to a blog that makes you look like amazing. Yes. Right. And they watch a video. There's now a connection with you more than maybe some other guy that was talking to them on the phone. Yeah. It's the videos. It's um, I mean, I send, it, it, that's exactly right. So I, my follow up, like after I talk to somebody, I send them, a, I just go, uh, they're getting seven calls, like 20 calls, FISBOs, everything. I just got a FISBO because I just kept sending them follow up. Email. Oh, by the way, this video would be uh, good for you. And then uh, among other things, stats and other things that I send them. But, you know, there's, there's so much going on here that I don't think you, I want to make sure the audience gets is that you're leading yeah. with education. Yeah. The, the, the communication that you're following up with people is, hey, here's something useful. Here's something so good worth paying money for. Here's something so good worth paying money for. Here's something helpful, 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 helpful. Yes. And then that brings the business into you. You're not following up saying, can I sell your home? Can I sell your home? Can I sell your home? 
Yeah. So Zig Ziglar said he had one example that like, you know, do you come up to the uh, fireplace or somebody will come up to the fireplace and says, Hey, I'll give you wood when you give me fire. You know, it's, that doesn't work, right? You got to give, you got to feed a wood to get the fire started. And so that's, I take that approach with my clients, like before what's different about me than everybody else calling that FISBO. And um, the difference between sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't, you know, sometimes I wasted a lot of time writing these follow-up and sending all this stuff. But um, I send a lot of education-based stuff, these videos, market stats, um, and I'm consistently following up, but it's not just like, can I sell your home? It's like, here's something of value every single time. Yeah. I, I just had to share something that I would do in your situation that I hear around just for the audience. Yeah. Um, have you heard of a company called Box Brownie? No. So Box Brownie, uh, they uh, will make your photos look amazing for like a dollar or two and do virtual staging. So you go out there with your iPhone, take pictures of the property and you upload it to them. I'm giving them a good plug here because they got a good little business model, but uh, they, you know, outsource photography retouch ups all over the world. So you could go out there and say, Hey, let me, let's meet, let me go through your home, take some photos and I'll give you a whole package of photos for free mm -hmm. to add a little value. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is. So yeah. it's all about just leading people, helping people. Picture. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So that's taken from the phone. They can touch it up. So anyways, yes, but those are little things you could do to add value to, or like, you know, um, you know, take me through a walkthrough, like with your iPhone on FaceTime so I can see the property, maybe give you a good CMA where it's actually based upon in, inside the house too, as opposed to just, you know, externally data, you know, yeah. but um, that's great, man. So you, you, you learn the real estate's a very hardcore sales culture. Give me a phone, give me a script. Let's go sell, sell, sell and close, close, close. Right. But early in the business, you're, you're already have this insight to education based marketing of leading with something helpful first, as opposed to just, you know, selling, where did that come from? Or is that new or where did that mind shift take? Have you always had that? Give me some insight. Cause it, it sounds like a lot of books, new, but not, not everyone thinks that way when they're selling. Yeah, I read a lot of books, and so I don't even remember where some of these things come from, but it's definitely not. I don't think it's, like, naturally that I believe that. Um, I started off early on with, like, you know, learning Mike Ferry and um, a lot of different sales, real estate sales trainers, and I've listened to a lot of that stuff. Um, but I, I feel like it's just a mix of reading a lot of books on sales, marketing, and business in general. Mm -hmm. um, plus seeing what works and you know like just for example bizbos and um everybody here is getting barraged with realtors right and so you have a lot of choices here and so i just find that providing a lot of value and showing somebody that i you know put in this extra effort in the beginning to educate them to show them you know how i have every base covered and um, how I would help them and find out what's important to them and ask them. I find that that works. And it's just like, you're always, you know what I mean? You're always collab uh, not collaborating, calibrating your strategy. So it's always, I'm always adding a little bit, editing, deleting, just figuring out the right secret sauce for how to, cause most of my business, uh, well, until I started viral, most of my business was cold. Um, now it's, I'm getting a lot of, you know, friends, family, SOI, just Facebook, email, everything. I'm getting a lot of calls from that. Now that's hard. So if you started with Mike Ferry and yeah. I've worked with Mike, I actually personally coached with Mike for a little over a year. One yeah, on one. yeah. Yeah. I remember so that. much from him. Um, he, uh, you know, you, you start off, you know, cold calling, reach out to strangers because most people starting for real estate don't have any list at all. You know, they have to start totally cold in the market, which is, which is what you have to do but you get very comfortable talking to strangers all the time. And mm -hmm. it's very difficult to start asking people, you know, for business. It's almost like I'd rather talk to strangers because the fear of rejection from them isn't as bad as the rejection you get from like friends and family and people, you know, yeah. saying, why are you, cause it's hard to college together. And you know, we, why are you calling me up asking about business and real estate? It's awkward for a lot of people. Yeah. How yeah. did you handle the awkwardness 
or was there any when you had to start talking to people that you know in your database for business? Um, yeah, it's definitely awkward. Um, you know, I just, you have a big enough why you just want to be successful. You'll do whatever, you know? And, uh, I was awkward and weird and like every, you know, like every bad thing in the book that every nightmare situation that you, that anybody can think of, like it happened. Um, but you know, I look back and now I've established kind of a reputation in my community among a lot of people that I know as, you know, like a hustler or somebody who knows what they're doing, um, a professional. And, um, you know, it's just, I just, I just push through it really. Um, and now it's not awkward at all. Like now it's like, everybody talks to me about real estate. I don't ever even bring it up anymore. Like <laughs> when I'm calling people, I maybe have to bring it up a little bit. Hey, how are you? Oh, by the way, you know, what, what's going on? But, um, for the most part, people, my friends, family database now brings it up with me and asks me and they just like, they've been waiting. And it seems like they, I'm at a party or I'm at or talking to them on the phone or whatever. And it seems like they've been waiting to ask me this question about their house forever that they just start blurting. They're like, by the way, I have 17 questions that I wrote down to ask you. I didn't realize I was going to run they were, into They were afraid that bringing up a business question in a personal setting with you was, was inappropriate. But since you started sending them stuff, I talked to you. Yeah. yeah interesting. Yes. Oh, humans are interesting creatures. Yeah. Cool. All right. So did you have any issues with the production value of the video? So I don't, you know, we're, we're starting with a webcam, you know, a simple webcam. I think what we ship our clients is the Logitech C920. That's the webcam I'm using right now. Yep, here it is. Let me share it with the audience here real quick. This is the webcam. It goes for 50 bucks. Not bad. This is a solid webcam. <clears throat> All right. So $50 webcam. We give you a microphone. We even give you a little chat light now that goes like right on the front of your uh, webcam. So you're lit. And uh, that's how you shoot your videos. And they turn out really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with them. Did you have any limiting beliefs about the value of the video production in like a high end market? Or, um, I, or I, I probably did back then. I don't remember if I, you know, how I felt back then about it. Um, I probably did. I think that's probably why I flew to Omaha um, to shoot a lot of those evergreen videos. But then I supplement with a lot of videos there. But, you know, it, it's like, I mean, if you're just starting out or if you're, you know, you don't have a lot of money to invest, you don't want to do high productions, all those things. Um, it's fine. Like what you're just, you're in front of people and it's clear, you know, I mean, is that the camera you're using right yeah. now? Yeah. So, I mean, it's very clear. Like there's no, you're, it's fine. So, um, you know, just don't overthink things. That's my problems. I overthink things. But, you know, ultimately I have a guy who I'm, I'm, I need to write scripts and do a lot more evergreen videos because I'm almost running out of mine. Um, Let's step back. Yeah. What do you mean by evergreen video? Oh, okay. So that's an, a video that's going to stay relevant in like 10 years. So it's a video that I can shoot now and release in a year. Um, that means that it's going to, so evergreen means it stays evergreen. It's and you can kind of keep linking back to it with the same question that's always asked. Yeah. So exactly. So my follow-up emails have links to a lot of evergreen videos that are relevant to the conversation that I'm having with the potential client. Good. So, um, uh, to shoot those videos, I have to, you know, I write some scripts and do them. I found somebody who's $500 to sit with me all day with multiple cameras, uh, microphones, you know, he's there all day. He'll be there for like six to eight hours and I can shoot 20 videos with him. So at the end of the day, it's not that expensive anyway. Like you don't need high production. I'm sure there's people who charge like 10 grand for that, you know, and like, we'll do this and do that. I can send, and he'll very basically edit it, you know, cut out any mistakes and anything, send to you, and then you guys edit it and prep everything, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. and it, that's, you know, if I want to do that, but I don't have to, you know. I think you're just, well, I, I think the message has to be here for the audience watching is that uh, you are giving with your content. You are not, your videos are not, hey, here's why you need to hire me. Or here's why I need to sell your house. They're not like yeah. selfish commercial videos you're teaching and educating in the content you're pushing it out 
that's adding value and people are contacting you or it's giving you a foundation of a brand when you call your database. So like they know who you are when you call makes the conversations easier. Think of it this way, that somebody that I have, you know, I talk to several potential buyers and sellers every day and each of them have, let's say 10 questions, not even that many, probably each of them have 10 questions that they ask commonly that I have to keep repeating the explanation. Hey, you know, I hear the market slowing down right now. Is that true? And I have to regurgitate the same thing that I said already four times that day. Yep. So, you know, why not just do a good job of me like writing down my answer, kind of clarifying it, just making sure it's a good explanation of what's going on in the market or the process of, you know, reading through disclosures or whatever the topic is and turn that into a video. And now I can just send that video to somebody and that's it. There's no like nowhere in there. Well, of course in there, I'm like, I'm the best, you know, there's places where I'm like, I'm the best, but that's because I'm just being honest. Like I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm like saying like, Hey, you can work with the, when you're writing in a multiple offer situation, you need to do these seven things, which I do. So that's why clearly you need to work with me, but that's not the purpose of the video. The purpose is education, teaching, explaining, and in that, I automatically am selling myself because I'm passionate that I'm, I do all those good things. Yep. Um, and also, you know, I send this stuff that answers people's questions. And I, I get a lot of good positive feedback from a lot of people who are like, I watched all your videos, especially analytical people. They're like, I watched all your videos three times over. And uh, it was very helpful. Um, you know, and I'm like, all right, great. We don't have to talk anymore. Let's start writing offers. That's great. <laughs> good. I want to, I was pulling something up while you were sharing that. I want to share with the audience. So I don't know uh, the publication market in, in so you, we're, we're talking a little bit about like, what are some of the options beyond uh, just recording with your webcam at viral and you share how you come to Omaha and the video production crew is not as bad as you think if you yeah. want to up the production level. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about maybe if you want to up the quality of your topics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're obviously doing Q and a, you're doing evergreen, you have market updates. I mean, those are all the standard things. Yeah. And you can actually go to our website and if you click the real estate industry, you will find the top 24 topics that work in pretty much every market that I would recommend search optimize with a description that you can get uh, for your real estate videos. And we give all, we give a copy of that to all of our clients. However, the, best answer if you want to go to the highest level of the correct answer for your topics it's basically local real estate stories or local community stories kind of like a newspaper but that's like a lot of work <laughs> to find that information gary v says be the uh online yeah mayor yeah, yeah be the online mayor like you start interviewing businesses you start covering stories mm -hmm. you basically become a journalist yeah now, here's what's cool you don't actually have to be the journalist you can hire them and they're not that expensive so let me give you an example. So you may have a publication like this in San Diego. We have the reader. It's kind of like yeah. the, it's like the magazine. You get all the bars that has like yeah. all the bands in it and stuff like that. And uh, restaurants advertise in it. And um, yeah, we have one like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you scroll on down, check this out. See where it says, write a story for us. You know, the going rates about a hundred bucks up to hundred bucks for a neighborhood news. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So if you go to the neighborhood, no, just to give you an idea of the, uh, of the market is, you know, they pay a hundred dollars for neighborhood news stories and $25 for any photos that are submitted to use with it. All right. Between, you know, 500 words, let's say answering all of this stuff. You can go to, if you were to actually go to these stories, let's say, and find the actual journalist. So let's say, um, this Eric guy. Yeah. You can call Eric up and say, Hey man, you want to write for me and my blog? You want to grab some pictures? Want to give me some topics? I'll make a video to go with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that could really help you up the content if you want to do, <coughs> you wanted to go down that path. Excuse me. It's not as expensive as people think. Yeah. That's kind of a cool little tip. All right, man. It down, actually. Yeah. Uh, maybe contract out with a local, just a local journalist. And they go out, they'll go out, take pictures of like the, the area. They'll go out, you know, we edit those into your video, Joe. They'll go out and get the story. They'll even write it. They'll write the whole blog post, right? You make a little video summarizing it all, and you have something really cool to send out that's really unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So um, let's keep going. So we talked about reconnecting with your list. We talked about, well, 
we talked about your video production, the video topics. How do you build your database? How do you build it? Um, you know, I, I wish I had a, uh, I wish I could be like your shining example of like how you're supposed to do it. Um, but I've been fumbling that part. Um, I've been super busy, but really open houses, door knocking, calling, everybody that I connect with, the script is, you know, I've been sending, like if I'm door knocking, for example, hey, um, some of your neighbors have asked me to keep them in the loop about what's going on in the neighborhood and just in general real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best email address for you so that I can add you to that list? Um, and, you know, that's a script and that's the way to do it. I haven't been as consistent with it because viral, <laughs> everything that I've been doing has been getting me a lot of business. I've been working too much in the business, not focusing on building all that stuff, but um, that's, that's the way that I've been doing it. I capture emails at open houses, uh, yeah. people that I meet and just add, um, I need to, yeah, I just need to be more consistent personally. Let me, let me help you with that. I yeah. got a for you. It's not good. So hang on, yes. let's the screen. This is something we just added. So this is on the build fee. So um, new subscriber form, ask permission to send your video newsletter to every person you meet. So Joe, how many people would you say you speak to a week about real estate? Two to 300. That's a lot. I want you to imagine at the end of, by the way, everyone, that's a big secret to success. You know, you speak to two to 300 people a week about real estate. So keep that in mind. Um, at the end of all those conversations, you want to say, hey, by the way, I publish, um, you know, a local newsletter about what's going on in the, in the real estate market specific to the area. Can I send it to you? It's two helpful videos a month I publish. What's your best email address? If we can add that script to the end of every contact, imagine how you'll build your list over time. So here's what you do. You'll build your database naturally by offering to stay in touch after every conversation. And you can train your staff to do that at some point too. So we're going to create this little, so ask us here, talk to your person viral. We're going to I'll zoom in here so you can see it here. But we're going to create this little internal form for you that says add a subscriber. And it will say, who did you receive permission from who wants your newsletter? So right now it's just you, but as you have more agents and you train them to ask permission to stay in touch, we can have a little drop down box. So your database is sorted by agent name, right? So imagine someday when you're the number one agent in the world, think how many agents you'll have or ISAs you're going to have and all the people they're talking to, this scales with them, right? Mm -hmm. You put in the email address of the person and a little note of how you met them. And then uh, those are required. And then down here, you put in anything else you want to click submit. Now, here's what's cool. If you're speaking to two to 300 people a week, I mean, they probably are only just hearing you for the first time or loosely on the phone, right? Once you get permission to stay in touch and you click submit, that person goes straight into your database and they're, they're on your newsletters. It goes right into our Emma email marketing program. But get this, once you click submit, it automatically kicks out a confirmation email. So imagine they hang up the phone, you hang up the phone, you put their information in, 30 seconds later, email pops up on their phone. It was great to visit with you from your name. You're now subscribed to our video newsletter. And this is just like a picture of you, your reviews, your website, your videos, how awesome you are. Click here to find out what your home is worth. Click out to search for homes. You follow me? Yes. The, 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 the subscription confirmation email, the email that goes out after someone opts in or buys is the highest open email of all marketing. Yep. With an average open rate of 50%, it's the single most important email you can send. Yep. So let's get that in place for you, buddy. Sound good? Yes, please. Yep. And what's important is you see as you have a team that can scale by, you know, your whole, you're training your whole team to ask permission. So one of the things that I want to share this with you, you can see my screen. I don't know if this is you can see this, but you have your attempts, right? How many attempts did I make to reach somebody? Do you see this, Joe? Yes. You have how many people did you actually speak with? Yes. Contacts? And then normally you'd have like appointments or leads generated, right? Yes. You see, I put a very important KPI, subscribers. Mm -hmm. How many people did you get permission with to stay in touch? That's your asset. That's your wealth building over time, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. How many people did you add to your list? So that's something you want to keep in mind by building your list as you're prospecting this way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, 
even like I can say like, hey, I get this FISBO or I got this person through circle prospecting, blah, blah. It's, I talk to every single person. I've had to follow up at least like 50 times, you know, <laughs> like 20, 30, 40 times, like especially in a competitive market, like this FISBO that I just got, like that I were just listing today. Yeah. Um, I called him 10, 15 times. I emailed him five, 10 times. Um, and so uh, the subscriber thing is super important because a lot of people that you're going to talk to are not thinking about selling today or tomorrow no. or, or in the next month or three months. And even in a week, they're going to forget about you because you don't have Mindshare. But if you add them as a subscriber, you add them to your database, you stay in touch with them. Um, you're doing all the other stuff, you know, email is one aspect of it, but you got to be doing all the other stuff in the community and, and open houses and signs and everything, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got Mindshare. And that's when, you know, three years down the line, like I got a listing earlier this year, they're like, Hey, um, I don't know if you remember me, but uh, I met you at an open house about three years ago. And somehow I just started getting all your emails. And, um, and I don't know if you know, but like you've been selling houses in my neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm like, yeah, I know. And uh, can you come list my home, essentially? So um, that's, you know, when you're doing it and you're just starting out and you're hungry and you're like entrepreneurial, um, going from E to P, you have to be purposeful. You have to be P and you have to uh, build that subscriber base and build that database because that's when, you know, one morning you wake up and it's just raining leads. And now you're, you don't even have time to cold call or door knock anymore because you just have all these warm leads, hot leads calling you. Yeah. Well, let me, um, let me help the audience understand a little deeper what you just said there because that was very profound. I did a little Google search. I want to share something here. Uh, there's a really good book called The Ultimate Sales Machine by an interview called, uh, individual called Chet Holmes. Wait, what, what's the, can you? <laughs> Me and you are a lot alike, Joe. <laughs> I think we're cut from the same cloth. Um, there's a book I called- I just finished oh, reading it a second time. Well, then let's tell the story and see if, see, if, see if I get the story right, all right? There's a section in that book where he talks about, there's an audience. He says, how many of you are, need to buy a car? Let's say the room is 100 people. You'll have three people raise their hand and says, yes, I am looking to buy a car right now. You'll have six to seven people in that audience that says, you know what? Now that you've mentioned it, I need a new car. <laughs> okay. 30% of the audience are not really thinking about it, but they might be. I think that's what it is. 30% don't think they're interested and 30% know they're not interested. Now, when you start off in real estate and you have no income and you just are on like, I need money now, you're given the phone, you're given a script, what? Let the phone ring three times, no voicemail. If the lead's not ready to do something in seven days, throw it away. You've heard that before, that mentality, right? Um, you're going after like, I need an appointment now. I'm going to focus on this now business, which is like that 3%, which I would say it's less. I mean, what's the conversion rate of online leads? You know, you got to generate a hundred to get what, one, maybe two sales? So that's about right, isn't it? One to 2% conversion rates, even on internet leads, you know? Yeah, yeah. So where you start getting more sophisticated in business and what Joe is sharing here is, what are we doing with the six to 7% or the 30% they're not thinking about it, but maybe you're open to it? This whole part of this triangle, what are we doing to stay in touch with those people so when they are ready to buy, they think of you and call you? And that's what you're doing by building your database. Not just focusing on this, immediate now business. And you have to do both. I like to think of the very top of this triangle as your income. And as you move down farther, that triangle, that's your wealth. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Did I get the story right? Yeah. That was pretty on the money. All right. Cool. I just read the book and I like, when you showed that, I was like, that looks familiar. Mm -hmm. And I barely even, and then you started explaining and I was like, oh, I remember reading that. Yeah. I reading. So we talked about reconnecting. We talked about why you did it. We talked about some of the stories. We talked about building your list. We talked about some topics and some ideas for that. Uh, let's end here. Um, we give you the names of, or at least the email addresses. We give you whatever information you submitted into your Emma account, which is what you use for your internet marketing. But we give you the, um, 
the information of everyone who has clicked the link in any of your emails or has opened those emails. And that's good information to know because you can prioritize some follow up with those people with a script like, hey, this is Joe, I'm just reaching out. Uh, I see you subscribe. Not that you click, but I see you subscribe. That's a much more appropriate uh, un or Willian way of saying I'm tracking you online, but I see you subscribe and want to know maybe if you have any questions about real estate. It's just something I do as a community service to help people out. Huh? What? Yeah, just I'm a local realtor. Just calling you up. I, you may get some of my videos in your email about real estate. I just want to see if you have any questions about maybe buying or selling a home or your home's worth or renovating your property or renting your property. Do you have any questions about real estate? I just like to call around my neighbors and community members to see if I can help because I know a lot about this stuff. Oh, well, okay. Well, rates are up. <laughs> maybe a conversation starts, right? And the conversation goes down and you, you open up with something nice and easy like that. And then uh, the conversation after you get them talking uh, turns into, well, when do you plan on moving or do you know anyone who's looking to buy or sell a home? type of conversation. So what are you doing with your open and click report, Joe? Anything? Um, again, I'm inconsistent with it, to be honest. This is the purpose of this. I'm glad we got on this interview because it's also accountability. Good. Um, For the so, whole world to see, Joe. Yeah, 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 whatever. It's good. Um, no, I like it. That's how all coaching calls should be. Yes, is yeah, this is broadcast live on Facebook. I already wrote down like three things that I need to implement after this. And we're already like working 14 hour days, implementing everything. Oh, else. I know, I know. But um, no, no, we, it's good stuff. So um, no, I'm inconsistent with it, but yeah, when the emails come in and I get those click through, I, first of all, a lot of the people who are clicking are people that I've been having conversation with conversations with recently good. also. Um, and so, yeah, so I feel like, you know, maybe they're like, Oh, I got this email. Um, and so it's a good reason for me to follow up. And sometimes I don't even say, um, I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't say the subscriber part. I just call them. And I'm like, Hey, what's up? It's Joe Poliak. Um, just want to say, how, how's it going? Uh, you know, yeah, that's fine. what's going on? You think I'm fine selling? And, uh, so that they don't really even realize that I saw that they subscribed. But, and a lot of times, Oh, it's so funny. I just, I was just watching your video. I'm like, Oh, okay. Which video? Well, that's, no, great. Yeah. Great. Like about it? What do you want to talk about? You start. Yeah. 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 Started. And so, um, yeah, again, I'm inconsistent with it. I need to be more consistent. Um, but it's a great, yeah, it's just a great like segue. It's a little touch like three days after they open it, four days after they open it. And they're like, yeah, I was just watching your video. I'm like, okay, great. What can I do for you? Well, nothing right now, but you know, I think in a year or so we're going to sell. Okay. Great you know, whatever. Okay. Well, why in a year? What's going on? Tell me what, like, what's, what's the deal? What are you interested in? Um, you know, I've, uh, to go back to like Mike Ferry and, um, the importance of scripts and talking to people. I don't think the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people hate on him and, and say old school and blah, blah, blah. I don't hate um, him at all. I think it's a great place to no, start when you're just being, yeah, yeah. no, not you, but I mean, just like, I do hear it, you know, old school and blah, blah. Um, I don't think I could, I would have nearly any amount of as much success uh, without just the ability to be able to start conversations with random people and not be super awkward. I'm still super awkward, but like, you know, a lot less awkward. And so it's just like, I'm, I'm just talking and I've internalized all these scripts, but it's really just questions that you need to ask anybody. Mike trained you how to become a better communicator. Just be a better communicator and just, you know, the, people call them, I don't like scripts because it sounds scripts. It's well, I, like, I don't, don't call it scripts. Just call it questions you need to ask. If you're talking to somebody who's thinking about buying or selling a piece of real estate, where do you plan on moving? Uh, you know, where are you going to go next? Blah, 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 blah. How long have you lived here? You, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, um, and just conversation starters. And I've internalized it now to the point where it's just like, that's what I'm always asking and talking about. And, um, it's fun. Like I just, I have like, like I said, people, Oh, I'm, I don't want to talk about work. Well, I don't know. I enjoy my work. So anytime people ask me about real estate at like 9 PM, yeah. you know, the thing they're like, Oh, I don't want to talk about work. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want to talk about anything else. Other than work. <laughs> like I'm, anything else is kind of boring to me. I, I love talking about, about work. work. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's good, man. Well, Joe, thanks for sharing all these tips. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, uh, a comment I want to say on what you said is uh, 
if someone wants to succeed in real estate, the foundation 100% is get them on the phone calling as fast as possible uh, and, you know, do the Mike Ferry system or yeah. whatever straight sales training to get you comfortable proactively interrupting people to start conversations. There's no way around it. If you're going to be in sales, you're going to have to get comfortable interrupting people. To paraphrase that, just like, just learn to not be awkward. You know, most well, people yes. are like taught like their whole life, like don't interrupt, you know, don't, oh, like they're doing something, blah, blah, blah. And so they're taught that thing their whole life. And then ultimately when it comes time to having to sell, they're super awkward because they don't know how to just talk to somebody. Yeah. And so in a Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, he talked about some I kid who was that. raised properly. Yeah. Uh, some kid who was praised uh, properly by the parents teaching the kid to talk to the cashier at the cash register, to talk to the, make your own orders. You know, I think that's really important. And uh, a lot of us aren't taught that as kids. Like I wasn't, my parents always ordered, did everything. Um, and I was awkward talking to people. And I still am, but I don't, you know, just don't care. Well, I think, I think you've overcome that and you've controlled that fear quite well. So I laugh at myself. I can laugh at myself. That's it. You know, start with, basic sales training. Um, yeah. Mike Ferry is great. Um, Maps coaching at KW puts out great stuff. The yeah. fundamental sales training. I'm I would now. soften it. I think a lot of it's very direct to a, to a fault at some point. I would soften the sales training with the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. So if you kind of took some of the principles of softening a little bit of, of it, that is more Yep, there you, there you go, right? And that's a classic. That was written back in like, what, the early 1900s or something. Have you ever had a conversation where somebody pulled out every book you referenced and yeah, they just pulled pretty, it out? It's pretty interesting. So how to win friends and influence people. Okay. And then the third book I would read, the third thing, is Permission Marketing from Seth Godin. You got that one? I'm going to give that one to you. Cool. That was written back in 99. I think it's more relevant today than ever, you know, and that's about publishing content, getting permission, building your list. Right. So if you took some sales training of like, you know, three hours a day of calling, I got to talk to people. I got to talk to 230 people a week. What do I say? What are the questions? How do I pre-qualify? How do I go on appointments? How do I prospect? How do I manage my time? Right. Then you have to make sure you're coming from a place of giving and not taking when you do the basic sales training. And that's what the Dale Carnegie book is going to help you understand is like, yes, it's sales, but I have to come from a place of gratitude and giving with sales. That's hard for people to, to merge. Right. And that's going to give you purpose. Like with that 3% of reaching out at the top of that triangle. And then once you've mastered that, I would go into that permission marketing book or even the lead generation model in the millionaire real estate agent book with the 33 touch. Yeah. Right about, okay, now that we're kind of, we're getting after, we're making a little bit of money with the 3%, I got to do something with the rest of that top of that triangle. And that's building the database. This is where viral marketing comes in. The Seth Godin book, the millionaire real estate agent book, the chapter on the lead generation model to help you there. And you got yourself a pretty powerful business just like you do, Joe. And it's going to grow. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thanks for the interview today. Thank you. Hope anyone watched, learned some good stuff. Um, by the way, I didn't even pull up your blog. What's the address of your blog if anyone wants to go check it out? Um, it's on my website. So it's just joepoliak.com. First name, last name, dot com. Click on the blog tab. Cool. And if uh, you're interested in uh, getting, again, the video marketing plan that uh, Joe is implementing, you can go to the homepage of our website, getviral.com, download the official video marketing plan. And uh, come talk to us. Request a free strategy call. We have a 30 day money back guarantee. So we'll literally build everything out for you. We'll ship you the webcam. We'll shoot some videos with you and you hate it all. We'll give you all your money back for any reason. And you can keep everything we built for you and you can keep the webcam as our gift for trying it out. So Joe, thanks buddy. Thank you.